Hi, welcome to the Hot Blog Tips Hangout, and today I'm here with Cheryl Locke from Fuzzy Wuzzy Annapels, and we got a special guest today, Sonia Winland. Thank you for joining us, Sonia. Thanks for having me. And today we're going to talk about blogging and just being yourself and, and to be the best blogger you can and to make, make it fun. Um, Sonia, you did a, a real nice post on blog envy and this is kind of a follow-up on Sonia's post and we'll link to that below it and we're also embedded right now on a uh, post on hotblogtips.com we'll link to that below in the description as well and you'll uh, you'll be able to check Sonia's post out and uh, there's a, a, it's pretty tough for for new bloggers when they're when they're jumping on and trying to find themselves, if you will, on what to blog about. And there's so much information out there, it can be very confusing, you know, the keywords and looking for competition and, you know, all the blogging advice on, you know, finding the right niche and getting the most traffic and all that. And, and the next thing you know, you're not yourself anymore. And then you see other other bloggers with, like Sonia put on her, Posts on beautiful themes and layouts and and the way that they're you know blogging and trying to follow in their footsteps to follow their traffic and their success and it doesn't really work work like that. You kind of need to be yourself and find yourself and express the real you when you're blogging so that you don't come across phony or fake. And then then we have the opposite side of the spectrum where bloggers are trying to fake it until you make it that type of thing you know it's uh, trying to teach you how to get a lot of traffic when they have no traffic or to get you know give SEO advice when they're not even indexed on Google you know there's there's a lot of that type of unfortunate misrepresentation and uh, most people can see right through that and there's there's a uh, there's a lot of risks to misleading people. For one thing, that they'll, uh, they'll if if you can convince others that you're someone that you're not, you'll risk the uh, risk them actually liking the person that you're not, and then you can't you can't uh, keep that going for very long. You can't keep acting. So what's going to happen is you're going to the real you is going to start seeping out and all of a sudden it's going to be confusing and they may not like the real you because now you've attracted the wrong readership, the wrong audience. Well, that's just my opinion anyway. And uh, I'm going to, this is going to be a real short, uh, short video today and I'm just going to hand it over to you right now Cheryl and get your thoughts because as everyone knows you always have an opinion no matter what. So. <laughs> and, and that's just me being a real person and actually I I get told, I believe I was told by Brian D. Hawkins to resist being the real me. So I try to do that all the time, but it sometimes it just seeps through. But yeah, we see a lot of people and it's very evident, especially people that start doing video. It's very hard to do a video or go to a conference and be more face to face and not really either know what you're talking about or be who you pretend to be online and I think there's no point in taking a you see where one big blogger decides he's going to use such and such theme all the bloggers go along with it you see them talk about one topic all of a sudden everybody's talking about it and I think that just means you are in the echo chamber you are just blending in there's nothing special about you and you're better off just saying and doing what you know and what you do and your blog looks like you want it to as long as it's functional and stand out rather than just blending in with the rest of them. That's true. I totally agree. Okay, good stuff. Yeah, I, uh, you yeah, know, just because just that little inside joke that nobody's going to understand, I, 
I, when I when I wrote this post, I I was privately told Cheryl that she's the one exception on being herself, and she should resist being herself at all costs. So, but but we love Cheryl, so that's all this is. Uh, how about you, Sonia? Have your thoughts? Any advice? Yeah, my take is, you know, when I first started blogging, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, and it wasn't that I was honest about it. I just didn't know. And so as I got into like marketing and really learning a lot about social media and whatnot, um, then I just started writing and I was learning, but I wasn't taking it seriously to the point where I could say I'm trying to be this or that. I, I, in a sense, maybe I was being myself, but behind the scenes, I was trying to create something that wasn't me. I was trying to replicate somebody else's success. And when it didn't happen for me, I felt like not only a failure, but I wanted to give up. And as time went by, I started to get that, you know what, people get you when you just be you. I mean, there's going to be some people that are not going to like what you say, and they're not going to like how you say it, and you can't please everybody. So don't try, because you will be butthurt every single time somebody gives you negative feedback. Um, it's just not worth it. And everybody's got their beliefs and whatnot, so that's why they think the way they think. But when you get serious with blogging, and that's all, that's another thing is, you know, are you serious? Are you doing it just to do it? Are you doing it for money? Or are you doing it because you really like it? For me, it's about passion, you know, and I just grew a big passion for it. But where I struggled was trying to be something I wasn't. Not that I wasn't trying to be myself. I was trying to replicate somebody else's success and not thinking about how long did it take them to really get there and I'm trying to do it in like a month or three months that's unrealistic but people bloggers do that a lot um, not like professional bloggers but new bloggers they think that oh if I do this I'll get this many followers and, and so forth and when I started out I started following a lot of bloggers that were just women blog bloggers whatever and uh, and there's no pun against no, you know nothing against them because there's a lot of very successful mom bloggers but a lot of women bloggers really struggle with that and they're so into you know you follow me I'll follow you let's do the blog hops let's do that I think those have gotten better um, but then you get some people that just want to get the numbers they want to get the followers they want to get the traffic thinking that if they had all that that they'll be just like the most popular blogger that in their niche and when it doesn't happen then they, they can't figure out what went wrong they can't figure out that one my blog probably looks like crap and for some of them it does you know but they don't see that they just are so in a rush to try to copy and when you copy it never looks that way because they don't know if they had it professionally designed or there's so many attributes that go into um, just being yourself and trying to develop something that's all your own and people are scared to just talk in their own way they think that if they have to have to sound like a certain blogger they have to sound a certain way in order for their message to get across or are people able to take them seriously for me personally and here's one bit peppy sorry I have a cold right now um, is when a blogger goes on and they, they write something and they're new and you can totally check it by their Alexa ranking if they have comments or no traffic. Um, and they'll like write a post like as if they are the authority or, or like they're the only person that knows how to do this. That's fine if your readers don't know how to do something. But for me, it's about credibility. You know, I paid my dues and I still like I feel I am paying my dues. Even though I've been doing it for three years, there's people have been doing it longer than me. But I just take my mistakes and I try to help other people learn from my mistakes don't do this I mean because you're gonna do what you want to do anyway but that's when I really figured out that that's me that's how I need to write that's what I need to, to, to share with people that read my blog and that's how people are gonna find value in it if I'm just pumping out the same stuff everybody else does but I don't put a spin on it my own perspective and saying or disagree saying you know what I didn't like that and here's why then it's not going to really add any value. Some people might like it, some people might not. But guess what? I don't sound like the norm. And a lot of bloggers that are new, you know, they're in such a rush to try to be something that they're not because some other 17-year-old is now making $50,000 with his blog. Yeah, great for you. You ain't paying my bills. But they don't know how to be themselves. You know, if you're new, 
fine. Say you're new. Everybody gets that because we all start it somewhere. Don't be afraid to uh, admit that you're green. You know, I actually have a lot more respect for people that don't know and they and they ask questions because I'm going to be the first to want to help you because guess what? People help me or they didn't help me. You know, but then too, you also have to take the initiative to really get out there and learn. But don't be dishonest because people can read through BS a mile away. I know I can. I know you guys can. And I know everybody else can too. Um, but just take your time. You know, pay your dues. You know, really learn your craft. But be you and don't try to be or look like somebody else because you'll fail miserably every time. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to do something and failed again and again and again. Sorry, I talk a lot. <laughs> oh no, that's good. You know, and and you uh, you found your passion. So yes. all those failures that you went, or even on, you, you know, while working your passion, we all trip. You know, and and when we when we're doing what we love to do and blogging about our well, you know, our passion, then it's a lot easier to keep pushing forward. You don't that's have right. that. You know that. Horror, you know, I was like, how in the world can I possibly keep going? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm I just isn't really. I don't really don't care about this, you know. I, I mentioned on the blog post, I had this weight loss thing. Now, you know, I just found a great domain. It was uh, hatemyshape.com, and I started a weight loss blog. And I, just, I, I don't like that, you know. I mean, it's just not my thing, you know. So I just couldn't keep it up. It was just yep. very draining, and. Uh, and you found what you love to do, and 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 yourself while you're doing it, and people like that, you know. It's just, and and you're you're attracting the right readership. You're not fooling people and tricking people into visiting your blog. It's the people that want to see what Sonia has to say and read her advice, and that interaction that you get is just proof positive of all of that. So that's that's great. Well, you know. One person asked me, you know, how do you get comments? How do you get all, you know, people retweet your stuff? There's a lot of things that bloggers use to get retweets, whether it's Tribear or they're commenting on other blogs. Um, one blogger in particular, her name is Adrienne Smith from AdrienneSmith.net. So her blogger, she's super nice, but she puts in the time. I mean, she goes and she comments and when she comments she leaves you really good uh, genuine you know feedback about something and she doesn't just come in and just put something just so she can say that she commented on your blog she really read your blog you know um, I mean those are things that I've done I've done join join comment groups I've joined Triver you know but it's not so much just joining those groups it's putting the time in there and networking with people I can't stress how important it is for new bloggers to network, network, network because people, that's the only way people are going to know your blog even exists. You know, if your blog looks like crap and you know it looks like crap, take the time to figure out how to fix it. Ask people for advice. They will give it to you and if they don't, to help with them. You will find somebody else that will. But they will help you and they'll, you know, you don't have to have a blog that looks like a perfect 10. But you want to make sure that you leave out the banner ads, you know, use just minimal. You know, um, one thing I learned from uh, moneydummy.com, John uh, Paul Aguiar, he said, you know, if you use banners on your website, use a minimum. You know, don't use a ton of banners that's going to take you away, take readers away from your website. He goes, you know, it's, it's fine, everybody wants to make affiliate money, things like that, but in the beginning stages, you really don't know what you're doing. Try to keep readers on your site. You know, try to put things on there if that's going to um, keep them, you know, coming back or looking at your content like what you did with Hot Blog Tips. You put your Google Hangout thing on there. So it takes me right to your YouTube page and right then and there, I know that that's your stuff. So I'm still, I may not be on your site, but I'm still looking at your stuff. You know, it's, li it's just little things that people can do to try to kind of carve their own personality and make their own blog. Like, I'd say at the end of the year, uh, 2012, I was going through some issues, personal issues, and one of them was I struggled to really see where my blog was going. Yeah, my my the website looked nice, but it had kind of like 
I kind of got tired of it. I wanted a new change. And when you do that, if you redesign your blind, if you're really doing something different, you want to make it look nice, figure out what who you're going to talk to, who your readers are, um, what's your message going to be, and is your narrow is your niche narrow or is it too big? Like I attended a, a webinar with De Derek Halpern from Social Triggers, and he says, you know, be um, be good at one thing, not good at many things, because when you're all over the place, people don't remember if you for a ton of things. They remember you for one thing. Like if you think of Amy Potterfield, she's good. She's known for Facebook. Mari Smith, Facebook. You know, and I mean, same thing with other people. What are you good at? Like for me, I felt like I was good at helping new bloggers. So when I redid my site, I said, you know, those are the people I really want to talk to. I don't care who comes to read my blog, you know, thank you. But those are the people I really want to write for because I remember what it was like to struggle. So as you are trying to figure out where to go, what direction for your blog, think about what you're good at. You know, even if you're new, what do you like? the most. You like Facebook? Fine. Go for it. Figure everything about Facebook, but put a different spin on it. Don't copy Mari Smith. Don't copy Amy Parterfield. Figure out a different, unique way that you can hone in and find something different that you can do with Facebook. And don't worry about being an expert in something. Be good at it. Just, just leave the word expert out. Just be good at it. Offer value. Solve people's problems. I, I don't know how many people don't realize that you saw people's problems and you helped them figure out something that you know they probably have experienced like you have you, your your word and your message is like golden they'll keep coming back for more and more whether they comment or not some people just aren't commenters don't take it personal and don't get butt hurt of it but if they come to your website and they share your posts there you go there you go that's good and I think that I think like you mentioned if you if you narrow your focus down and that's something we've covered in a few hangouts narrow it down to what you're good at what you like yep. to do to try to cover every aspect because Joe Blow over here with a popular blog he talks about 10 different things well that doesn't mean crap he yeah. <laughs> he may not know how to do those it, he may just be putting out vomit content you know and may not be useful so Focus it down and actually know how to do it, not just know how to read somebody else's and throw it back up on a on a page. Sure, and that's a that's a good that's a good poster idea. Vomit comment. <laughs> I actually gonna have one. Somebody's gonna steal I that. I already have it written. I just didn't put it up because, well, it's not exactly the nicey nice blogger blog type post is my vomit content. In fact, I had talked to Brian about it earlier, but <laughs> you see a lot of that because people are trying to, to to be someone else and they say, okay, this is a hot hot topic or this is great content, exactly. but yet I watch mostly videos. I do read your blogs on yet. Brian sends out a lot yeah, of blogging links. I read yours because you put it out exactly what I envisioned you would say to me if we met for coffee in the shop, you know? And that's a big thing, but I watch a lot of videos and a lot of these people try to give video tips, give video advice, and because that's what I do, I watch those and then people can start asking questions, normal little questions, and the people are blank. They don't know the common things that go with the whole aspect of making video and granted they may have a gazillion followers that bless them and worship them every time they put out any uh -huh. any information even if it's wrong but I'm like you are doing a disservice and when and when they find out that you aren't really giving them good information and you're you're trying to be something you're not you are going to be you're gonna lose all respect they right. they will not respect you anymore for that say I'm trying this out this is how I'm gonna try it you know if you've done it let's try it let me know what your results are let them know that you are trying yeah. and that it may not work for them or that you're not sh positive how the outcome is gonna be and you're gonna be a lot better off and that's something that I see 
tons of, and that's why I wrote my vomit content because I was just so irritated the other day after a day on YouTube. And it's it's much easier for me now that I've focused on video. Could I write about blogging? Yes. Do I care about it? No. So therefore, I don't. I've gotten away from the writing the the how to blog. Brian can do that. You can do it. A lot of people do it. I don't care to. So I think it's it's totally important to write it the way. Well, write it kind of the way that you would say it if you were talking to them over coffee. Right. But cut out all those bad words if you have to. Unless yeah. it's your own blog and then leave all the bad words in it. Because personally, if if you're a cusser, I want to know. Because when I see you down at some conference, I want to know whether or not you're going to offend me. Cussing right. wouldn't offend me. but yeah, like If you don't like offend you. We, we, have, we have to uh, mute... <laughs> Cheryl, all the time. <laughs> you know, and, and, and there's there are a lot of when you're when a new blogger is looking for themselves or looking to be looking to like you said find your own way and and to be unique. When you're looking to do that, there are all sorts of tools and and ways and methods of doing that. I mean, we have video and hangouts and podcasts and now we have the uh, slide shares getting very popular mm -hmm. you know there's there's a ton of tools that you can learn and focus on and find out what you're good at and figure out what you're comfortable with and use those I mean if you're good at interviews and you're you know find people in your niche and interview them if, if you want um, you know, if you want to do a podcast, set that up, learn it, and, and do the podcast. There's so many different avenues that's available to us, and they all work. Every single thing that I just mentioned works very well for a lot of bloggers. It doesn't work well with every blogger because a lot of people may not be, it may not be their, their thing, you know, so you just got to find what works best for you and what, uh, what you're comfortable with. You know, and 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 it's, it's important, like I said. So so you can keep pushing forward when times start getting tough. You know, it's you know it's it's beautiful. I'm in Michigan right now, and the sunshine is coming through the windows, and the grass is green, and and it's calling me. Brian, come outside, mow the lawn. But you know what? I, I got things to do. Man. You have to have something that you want to do more than to go out and do that and go out and have the barbecues because this is everybody. You know, I've the the whole uh, the title to my blog post is blogging is easy just be yourself but it's a lot of work it might be easy but it's time consuming and it and it takes work and then if yeah. you don't love what you're doing that's going to get old real fast oh yeah but Brian I, okay. going outside and barbecuing mowing <laughs> your lawn putting in your garden actually not all bloggers are bloggy bloggers Need I remind you, some bloggers write about their gardens, write about their barbecue skills. You don't have to blog about blogging because that's, I know tons of people that barely know what a blog is, but they'll get on and go look up a plant, they'll look up a gardening tips, you name it. I don't care if you think I'm the only person in my neighborhood, so there's only this many people that would be interested in my exclusive little niche. Let me tell you, there's millions and millions of people online and there's more than just you interested in that niche so if that's what you love to do are you gonna get 10,000 hits a day no there may not be that much traffic but if you're targeted and those hundred people that are interested in that visit you and and wanna connect with you because that's what they love to then that's success rather than a number of visitors, it's if you have the right visitors. I, I mean, totally I agree. I I talk about stuffed animals. At, <laughs> let's be real. But you love it, and that's all that matters, you know. Um, going off of what you're saying, there is uh, a lot of women bloggers that do talk about. I have one lady. Uh, I think it's called GetChocolate.com. All she talks about is chocolate. But she talks about chocolate in different ways as far as different recipes. She's got a ton of followers. 
And it has nothing to do with blogging. You know, I mean, there's another lady, it's called uh, I Heart, um, I think, Crafts or something like that. She's got a ton of followers, but she talks about crafts and, and organization. I Heart Organized, that's what it is. And her site is done, designed beautifully, but it has nothing to do with blogging. So that's why I go back to saying, you know, find one thing that you're good at. You know, and it doesn't have to be about social media because social media and blogging is so saturated, it's ridiculous. But we're all doing it, we all love it, and that's it. You know, but you've got to find what what makes you happy um, and stick with it. I mean, I had a golf blog years ago, set it up, it was gorgeous, it looked nice. I ran out of things to say. I like playing it rather than I do blogging about it. So I got rid of that. But what a waste of time that was for me. Because I just didn't know. So take heed to what we're telling you. Uh, you know, we're not experts. We just are just been there, done that. And I'm sure you have too. But figure out what it is you really, really want to talk about. Forget the norm, what everybody else is doing. Figure out what makes you happy. Because there's somebody else out there that will like exactly what you're talking about. Okay. All right. Well, it's, uh, I think that went very well. We all, I think, you know, I think we pretty much helped everybody out. Um, before we close out, I do want to give Mitch Mitchell, our buddy, uh, a shout out because he Hi, couldn't, Mitch. he couldn't make it today. He's on a business trip, but I did wear Snoopy shirt in honor of Mitch Mitchell. <laughs> M Mitch loves Snoopy, so I wore my Snoopy shirt. So uh, ah, Snoopy, I have to remember that. <laughs> and we'll see uh, Mitch back next week, hopefully next Sunday. We're on every Sunday, 1, 1-ish p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Thanks a lot, and thank you, Sonia. Thank you. You did fantastic, and I really appreciate you joining us. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, Cheryl. Bye. Bye, everybody.